Uh, Bray, may I ask you, is there a great difference between the uh, top of the world and the bottom of the world? Uh, there oh. is. Now, uh, the North Pole is the center of an ocean 10,000 feet deep. The South Pole is the center of a plateau 10,000 feet high. The North Polar Sea is surrounded by um, continents uh, slightly frozen. The Antarctic continent is surrounded by uh, a belt of ice, frozen seas of at least 1,200 miles thick. Now, the South is a plateau. It gets, in some places, 14,000 feet up. Uh, I've been over areas about 13,000, and it's a little bit chilly up there. So there's, uh, there's that big difference between the top and bottom of the world. I don't think the north really isn't very cold up there on the Arctic Ocean. One of the arguments people say about flat earth is, well, that's stupid, people would fall off the edge. Well, not really, just do a Google search. Go on Google and search for a coastline of Antarctica. And you're going to see that the coastline of Antarctica consists of two and three hundred foot ice walls. No one's falling off of anything. You know? And then you see depictions like that where a dude peeking under the firmament. You know, this is, these are ancient depictions right there. So, you know, now I'm, getting, I'm really intrigued by all this. More Antarctic expeditions follow after Shackleton. After World War II, the nations, especially Germany, Russia, and the United States, become literally obsessed with Antarctica. Now, a big part of that was, supposedly, after World War II, a lot of the Nazis went down there and you know, supposedly set up shop in Antarctica. So, we have this character, Admiral Byrd. Enter Admiral Byrd. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. The North Pole used to be a no-man's land, but uh, these are the days when, by buying a ticket on a commercial airliner, you can fly across the North Pole and drink a cocktail at the same time. Admiral Bird, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this Earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole, because it's getting crowded up there now, because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. In the Antarctic coastline, never once finding an inlet or path through or beyond the massive glacial wall. So the other question is, well, how come ships don't go off the sea if it's flat? How come ships don't fall off the edge? Well, here's why you don't fall off the edge. There's a 200 to 300 foot high wall <laughs> that is the coastline of Antarctica. And once they start finding ways to get through the ice to get there, more and more expeditions and, and better ships are, are built and, and used to get there. Then you get to Admiral Byrd. Now, when Admiral Byrd goes down there several times, and one of the operations is called Operation High Jump. And you're like, oh, oh geez. Uh, yeah, right. Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump. Really? Operation High Jump. <laughs> I mean, you know, because they went out there with aircraft carriers and airplanes and stuff. You know, some, some real heavy equipment and stuff like that. Operation High Jump. So then he gets on TV, national TV, and he does this radio show where he talks about all of the um, natural resources down there. I mean, coal and uranium and stuff to fuel the world forever. It's wonderful. And you can go on YouTube and look up the Admiral Byrd um, news interview. I think it was on CBS. And it's so it's wonderful. And all these nations are going down there, you know, Russia and Japan, all these nations are going down there. Check it out. Well, then he goes down after that interview. They go down on the next mission, which I believe was called Operation Deep Freeze. And then all of a sudden, everything changes. Everybody pulls out, they leave Antarctica, and all the nations that were down there doing whatever they were doing signed a treaty, the Antarctic Treaty, and I believe it was 1958 or somewhere thereabouts, saying, nope, um, nobody can stake a claim to Antarctica, and if you're going to go down there, you can only go down there for scientific reasons under carefully restricted guidance, um, but it's not a free-for-all. Nobody can just, you know, hey, I'm going to go check out Antarctica and do a high jump on my own. No, nope, can't do it. So wow, wow. when I look at the nations that signed the Antarctic Treaty and I look at the nations that are putting forward quote unquote space videos of the Earth, eh, they're the same people. So from, if, if I was to put on my tinfoil hat and play the conspiratorial uh, role here, 
there definitely appears to be some very suspicious things that took place. And then all of a sudden, NASA is formed. And then uh, simultaneously, you have Russia and the United States doing high altitude nuclear bomb testing.